Welcome back legends! Hope everyone's doing well, how's your day going, how are you? Hopefully you're happy and healthy. Today we're gonna watch the darkest episodes of Victorious. I was about to say iCarly, I've already done that with movies in depth, so if you wanna check it out, it'll be up here. But yeah, we're gonna do that, we're gonna check out the darkest episodes of Victorious. So we've got four scheduled today, scheduled. <laughs> we've, I've chosen out four episodes from Victorious that I think suit this theme of the darkest episodes. But if you do want to support this channel further, my Patreon will be linked down below in the description where you can access content before anyone else. And as well as that, don't forget to check me out on all my socials, Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd. Instagram and Letterboxd are both at Rebecca Rose with an X over the first E and Twitter is at Rebecca Rose with an X over the second E. Now, for all the episodes we're watching, ha ha ha, we have season one episode eight, Survival of the Hottest the iconic episode where they're all about to die in that van. Then after that we have season two episode four, Tori gets stuck. Then we have season two episode nine, who did it to Trina? And then finally we have season three episode 10, Crazy Pony with the icon Janet McCurdy. Ugh, ugh, get off my screen. I am so hot. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. He didn't lie. Yes, he's creepy, but he didn't lie. Hi. I'm really hot, but I'm still in a good mood. See, this was season one cat where she still wasn't too extreme in the like childlike behavior of her. She was more of a normal human. That's another video in its own, really. There's so many essays on it on YouTube. Just go watch one. I don't know why that's disturbing. It just is. I thought it was mayonnaise. I set up a kiddie pool over there and I'm charging people five bucks for five minutes. He said, I'm going to exploit this son. What, blow off school? I can get with that. I meant Saturday. He's like, we're good kids. We're not the bad boys over here. I'd say let's ditch school. Who cares about education? Hey! Look at Jane's blue twirls in her hair. He's face down in the kiddie pool. Yep. Oh, let's get this clap. Come on, legends. If you remember this, you're from the OG days. I got it, I'm just a seasoned professional now, is what it is. Thank you, thank you, I got it. Yeah, they're pumped for now until they almost die in the sauna trap that they get stuck in. I mean, if that's not dark, I don't know what it is. Like, you can't tell me the premise of this isn't dark. Without the laugh track, this is a very serious episode. But what if one day all your sweat like builds up inside and you just explode? I would love that. She was so edgy. <laughs> I mean, even that was a dark concept, Tori. Was she hoping that would happen? Who knows? I'm kidding. I'm not here for Tori slander. I'm here for Tori since day one. Tori is a legend. Stop hating on her, you rude pooters. Yeah, I called you out. Hmm. I'll meet you in the alley. We're gonna have a fight. Okay, I just went to the bathroom. She's gonna be back in a few minutes. And then she can start Beck's truck and then pull us forward so we can get out. They could have all died in this RV. It's the end of Victorious. No one made it shine. I mean, their foreheads were shiny after the end of this, but not in the way they intended to make it shine. Oh, come on. Just hang out with us for a few minutes. Please. Hang out. Come on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, Kat really said, I'm gonna ditch my friend. She barely hesitated. Why did you invite me here? We did. You invited us. No one likes you. <laughs> They always chose such violence when it came to Trina. Cat was out here living a questionable best life, but you know what? Girlie was living life, breathing air, having fun. So good for her because she was far from death here. It's so hot! We love cinematic parallels. I know the writers were real proud of that moment. They were like, yes, give us the Emmy now. Stop. They were all so ungrateful. I would have been praising the Lord Farquaad himself for that blessing. Uh -oh. Beck still somehow is giving zero energy in this scene. In every form, Beck just gives the least amount of energy. I don't know how this boy does it. I'm extremely hot now. You always were. I forgot about my fish tank. <laughs> Wait. We're gonna drink fish water? No, I'm not getting some sort of infection. Like, that looks murky as hell. No, thank you. I would rather die in the RV than drink the fish water. I heard you swallow. 
Trina really said survival of the fittest here, didn't she? She just said the rest can suffer. I was smart enough to pack my own water so I shall live. None of them had rights to Trina. They never did, to be fair. And you know what? I don't blame Trina. They were never nice to her. Not that it was granted. Let's put it into perspective. That man just served like Tanner from Teen Beach Movie vibes. Everyone gets one tongue dip. If they had to make an official chart for desperation, I feel like this scene could make it on the chart. <laughs> Love our guy Robbie, but in the say, but at the same time, he deserves no rights. I'm not sorry. Yes, look on my arm. See. Look, there's Jade's tattoo. I always, I know I brought this up in another one of my Victorious kind of commentaries, but as a child, I never registered that she has a tattoo. It's only recently I registered that she has a tattoo. Thank you, Catherine Obvious. <laughs> what? It's always so embarrassing when you try and say something that's like a well-known phrase and you just say it wrong. I feel the secondhand embarrassment. Like, please don't correct me. Let me go about my life thinking it the way I've always believed it to be because I don't want to stand this embarrassment. It's not fair. I'm gonna drink that filthy water. No, 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 no. This episode really didn't do Robbie well. To be fair, what episode did in the later seasons, but they really showed him like it is worst elements. This boy was not having a good time. Oh, and then they have, I forgot he gets sick. See, what do I, yeah. Boy was never shown in the greatest of ways. You can always make it better by singing a song. You, you don't have to. Yeah, Tori's like, let me just sing our theme tune. Stream it now on Spotify. <laughs> oh, also I love how the other car was gone. It's like, if they had just looked outside the van, they may have been able to open it a lot earlier than they thought. Cause the van's gone. Like, how long did they actually really have to be in there for? It'd be funny if they just, it was it was there for like 10 minutes. They're all dumb pooters, is what they are. Maybe that's the darkest part of this episode. So why did you guys just open the door? Cause there's a gigantic RV parked right- Yeah, they must feel like dumb pooters. And they should. Let's enjoy that ocean! Well, they didn't die. They lived to see another episode. Okay, now we're gonna watch season two, episode four. Tori gets stuck. I don't remember what it's about, but I feel like it's about the episode where Tori gets the role that Jade really wanted. And Jade basically tries to kill her in the process to get the role back. So we're gonna dive into that. Let's go. Like, need I say more? That's already dark as it is. They were really saying, wake up to us in those mornings, weren't they? Wake up. Oh my god, Jade already looks so much older in this compared to season one. Well, why did your brother paint part of his body purple? He had a job interview. <laughs> he didn't get it. See, even in season two here, Kat was still a little more tame. Each season, I feel like she progressively got worse. I'm playing Susie, right? <laughs> Psycho is really just left all of them to feel the wrath of Jade. He knew what was coming and the grown man couldn't handle it. Now, what does that tell you about Jade? Power. I got cheated and humiliated. You get used to it. <laughs> not Rex looking at Robbie, that was so uncalled for. <laughs> they did not treat Robbie well. Yeah, if you get sick, or go missing, or get hit by a bus. <gasps> Remember that episode as well where like Jade was about to kill Tori again? She had the shovel in the car and everything. Love our girl Jade, but she also needed help. She was a criminal in the making. <laughs> you want to <gasps> This, okay, I keep jumping back and forth, but this episode also reminds me of the blooper episode, Blooptorious, where they had to do this scene and Ariana kept getting it wrong. Maybe Blooptorious is the darkest episode of Victorious. They always looked like they were under threat each time they got a line wrong. Am I not the only one that saw like the deer in headlight look they had each time? I'm telling you, they need. They, they were like, blink twice if you need help. They were all blinking twice. Who is it? Some guy who works for Lady Gaga. <gasps> Jade was evil for this, this whole episode. You're gonna turn down a job in a real music video just to be in some little play here at school? This was messed up. Well, you can't defend this. 
Was it Sin? Oh, it was Sinjin. He was such a simp for every woman that walked in this school. So now you don't get thirty dollars. You get to keep looking like that. She did them so dirty. <laughs> now get down below for anything else. Oh, it was okay. Oh. Andre was acting for his life here. He acted as if his life depended on this role. And you know what? Andre is underappreciated. What a legend he was. <laughs> oh yeah, I forget that Trina. This is just me remembering everything all of a sudden. I remember Trina is so insensitive that she goes to the hospital to see what a real person with the same issue this character has, illness, would actually cough like. Oh, well, women do the work you never see. Oh, Andre's so adorable. Look at him. Younger me was convinced this was live theatre singing happening right now, and I was so impressed. It's not, sadly. Yeah, I got flowers for uh, uh, Tori Vega. Me? Huh. This could have been deadly. I wonder who would have sent me flowers. Oh, Tori, those are Bush Daisy! <laughs> Bruh! How was Jade not almost expelled for this? She was threatening a classmate's life, and Psychowitz just stood there and let it happen. Man, why is he being so silent for? It says there's a car parked in Robbie's butt. <laughs> oh my god! Bro, why was Jade so into that? Oh. So. Do I need to say it again about how dirty they did Robbie? We're on season two now, a whole season from the last episode. And they're still giving him the weirdest storylines they could think of. Robbie, you want to explain? <laughs> Does he really want to? And a scary bully made me swallow it. Oh, that's sad. What kind of car is it? It looks like a sports car. Yeah. It's Asking the important questions that season three and season four cat could never think of. Listen. <laughs> Nature is healing. I know where you could get some O negative blood. Where? Right here. I cannot stress it enough how much Jade tried to wipe out Tori. Thank you. Get away from me! No <laughs> one liked Trina. She was treated like trash. <laughs> Stage three tuberculosis score! <laughs> Stage three? Stage three. Oh, this poor man. He did not deserve this. Like, could Girlie not have just recorded it from outside? <laughs> This was so insensitive. And then Trina starts breathing a hot breath and spouting it all over the poor, frail old man at stage three. That extra, his prescription needs to be updated. There is no way my man did not see that. I don't care if your head's tilted to the side, his peripheral vision needs to be tested. What would they do to Robbie in this episode? You lost her blood? You don't want to hear that. What? Spongebob underwear. <sighs> Nickelodeon said let's get that self promo. Although Spongebob needed no promo. Spongebob was the god of Nickelodeon. Because a diseased man really gave me tuberculosis. Yes! If Trina had tuberculosis, surely Cycle, it's once again, should have sent her home. This man was unhinged. How he was looking after kids all day at school. Was he checked? Was he background checked? I love Psychowitz, but was he background checked? It seems like the answer is no. Hey. Oh my god, I remember what happens. Robbie. Ah, he needs to learn to just stop. Stop. Just stop, Robbie. Oh, sweet. Did you know if you hold blood up against the light, you can totally see all the- <gasps> I hate that so much. Oh, I would be so mad. The amount of blood he just dropped of yours. That Porsche can just back itself out. Now he's gonna have to find an alternative way. We're not docking. I'll park the body. See, look, so many people hate on our girl here, Tori, but look at her pulling through out of determination. She had a commitment and she stuck to it. <coughs> Trina was just spouting her infection all over this audience. Trina could have started the next pandemic. It's all about a Captain Well, this bit was live theatre. 
Eight-year-old me would have been shaking in her boots. Ooh, it's live. Been acting like a gank all week. I'm not going to reward you by letting you play the lead. This is good that Psychowitz did this. But he had so many more options in this episode to intervene with different kind of things that went on. And he just chose silence. You're just a woman. Oh, he chose himself. Psychowitz said, this is my time to shine. I'm going to make it shine. Yay, standing ovation, performance of the century. Okay, that was dark to say the least. They're all the darkest episodes, shocker. We just watched Jade spend 20 minutes trying to wipe out Tori from existence. Not the first time she's done that. There needs to be an intervention. The adults in Hollywood arts. Stop choosing silence. Next we've got season two, episode nine, Who Did It's Trina. Generally though, this was a really odd episode. I remember it, but not favorably. If you get what I mean. It was there, but it didn't need to be there. But I guess they kind of wanted to have a PG whodunit. So for that, I commend them. They figured a way to have a PG whodunit. Trina, we're in the middle of a scene. Yeah, well that doesn't help whiten my feet, does it? Trina wants some self-care. If that means foot bleaching, okay. Clearly it's for her because I mean, who else is really seeing her feet? <laughs> What's that picture supposed to be over in the background behind Tori? It looks like a fruit, a kiwi, the inside of a kiwi. Is that what they were going for? It's a bit odd. Don't you think you're a little old to be playing with dolls? Right? I know. <laughs> the irony. Robbie really was clueless. What? You want to know my two favorite things about you? I love how Matt Bennett would move his mouth as if he was doing the speaking for Rex. It made it seem so much more believable when I watched the show as a kid. I appreciate the effort because Rex does have a voice actor. So it's not actually Matt Bennett, but I like the uh, the input. I'm not gonna bother getting the clap this time because I'm too lazy. Kev, I just look if you think my sister. Oh, Miss Ariana Grande was a lot more tanned in this season. Well, this episode, maybe it's the hair's darker as well. She's changed so much in four episodes. Anyone who'd call my adopted sister a weirdo is no friend of mine. <gasps> it's Freddy! I didn't know he was in this! <laughs> my boy Freddy! <laughs> I loved when they do that. Did they just subtly place a character from another show into their show? Iconic. I lived for this. You ready for this? Yeah. Get excited. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I swear girly could not have been marked high for this play. Oh no. Here we go, the death of Trina. <laughs> they all jumped out their seats. Freddie gave us those little facial reactions. Oh, I guess someone should get this on video. Jade's such a kind soul. One time, my brother was in Vegas and he fell out of a fourth story hotel window and landed on the roof of a shuttle bus. I still want to know more about Kat's brother because she had the craziest stories involving him. Some were very concerning and disturbing, but I'd like to know more. I don't know if I should hear more, but I want to know more. You posted it online? A little bit. <laughs> Jay did not know what the line was. She did not read the room and girl, he did not care to be fair. Why do we have to be here? Cause you all are suspects. <sighs> Nickelodeon said, let's have a whodunit. Posting videos of people's tragedies is just mean and wrong. I agree with him. The way Jade as well posted it so quick, she didn't hesitate. Someone cut a notch here, and that's what made Trina fall. Ooh. I'll add the audience sound effect for you. Man, whoever did it, you better step up. I want to go play with Kiko. <laughs> oh, Jay was so desperate. I don't blame him. He had plans. Before the play, she and Trina were fighting. We were arguing. Yeah. And do all your arguments end and I'm gonna kill you? <gasps> That's just a normal sibling argument, to be fair. There's nothing sinister there. Let's see, it was about 20 minutes before the play started. And I walked in- I love Victorious, but I'm not the biggest fan of these kind of throwbacky, let's look at the past episode structures where we have many flashbacks, even if it is to the earlier in the day. It doesn't really capture my interest. <laughs> It's a bit far, Jay. Why can't I be pretty like you? <laughs> you know where Nurse Connor is? 
No, why? I think Tori broke my jaw. Bro, wait, wait. Tori didn't actually punch him though. I swear there's more context to that. Gali didn't actually punch Sinjin since when? There's more to that story. I know for a fact they put an ad break to keep our attention going. Hey girl. <laughs> That's so lame. Hi, right, Dad. Can we get through this fast, please? <laughs> I swear Leon in this had like the best comedic timing out of all of them. They were all great, but I think he was like my favorite with the comedy side of things. I heard Jade come in, yelling for Robbie. In both of their retellings, Tori and Jade did each other so dirty. I just realized Beck is absent in this episode. Where's our boy who gives us zero energy? I miss him. Matthew back. I am so happy. <laughs> That seems like the more realistic way that Sinjin would have got injured. Because there's no way Tori actually punched Sinjin. Who else had a motive to get back at Trina? Cat. Hmm. Robbie really tried to pin this on Cat. The disrespect. Come on, the way they depicted Cat, there was no way she would have been capable of doing such a thing. Um, it was an unusually windy day here in Los Angeles. Get to the point. <laughs> Okay. Robbie. Oh, oh guy. He couldn't catch a break. When Trina walked by and said, Hey, Robbie. <laughs> oh, is this when they cut Robbie off straight away? They're like, this is just not true at all. Because no one believes him. <laughs> Did the writers hate Robbie or something? <laughs> What? <laughs> no one believes you. That's such a tragedy. <laughs> they, they got jobs packaging sushi. <laughs> oh, Drake and Josh. I forgot they did this. this is so iconic the way they did this. Oh, I, this is my favorite episode of Drake and Josh though, I think. It happened on a TV show. Drake and Josh. They were fans too. <laughs> that show was classic. It was. Look at Nickelodeon plugging their other shows again. They had no shame. <laughs> they did it so often as well. Some of the rigging equipment we use is kind of old. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Robbie, okay, you do that. You say it's old. You fall into that little plot. Mm-hmm, sure. Convenient. It looks like it was cut. Sabotage? But maybe- Wouldn't you know, Rex? Wouldn't you know? You shouldn't have cut Trina's gimbal. Trina shouldn't have whacked me in the face. That was so dark. Okay, so that brought us to the end of season two, episode eight or nine it was. That ending is kind of messed up when you think about it, because even though they try to make it lighthearted, like, oh, it's Rex who did it, we all full well know it was Robbie, really. Rex is just a puppet at the end of the day. It was Robbie. Anyway, now we're on to probably, like, I would consider this the darkest of all the episodes, and that is season three, episode 10, Crazy Pony, starring the legend Jeanette McCurdy. We were spoiled with a little bit of Nathan Cress in the previous episode, now we get Jeanette McCurdy, okay. Let's do this. This is the one where we have like a, you know, Tori kind of gets a stool curm, someone trying to sabotage her. It was dark, it was messed up. Girl already looked disheveled at the beginning of the episode, we knew this wasn't gonna be good for her. play that song do you do 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 spend like a billion hours trying to make the stupid venetian carnival mask for my world cultures class it's kind of a cool mask i'll give tori that she has one win this episode one <laughs> trina was literally going to create a new illness with the amount she came into school while she was ill mm. That's vile. I have to go to the bathroom and watch this Trina go off my hand. And who are we gonna meet in the bathroom, you say? Only time will tell. Maybe it's a girl called Pony? You seeing Jade? Oh, that's a really nice blue dress though. Trying to kill me. Oh my god, see, look. Also, Jade's trying to kill someone again. Again. Therapy, hello. So why is Jade trying to kill you? You'll see the evidence. I mean, she's still very pretty, though. Lane here intervened so much more than Psychowitz ever could have or ever did. Not could have. Psychowitz just chose to be complicit. Let's get this final clap. 
Oh. It was only season one that had the dancers clapping. Kind of rude. I feel disrespected. <laughs> See, these children's TV shows were why we were paranoid at every corner that someone was out to get us. Because of stuff like this. Tori tries to be nice and where does it get her? Almost endangered. Not almost. Why? Well, you're- I feel like it's very unhygienic though to eat in a toilet, but I mean, if it gets to that point, I'm sorry. <laughs> no! Sandwich. No, Which you don't need to flush the sandwich. See, look, Tori showed a stranger kindness and what did it get her once again? A near-death experience. An experience that traumatized her for years to come, although they never spoke of it again. I wish they did. They had the opportunity here to make Pony a villain story, like, Nora's? It could have been really cool. There was so much wasted potential. You don't have to lie, nobody ever remembers me. For a reason, she is insane. Also, you don't go there. <laughs> oh my you do not need to examine your tissue like that. <laughs> oh, why did they show us as well? That was, that was murky green. That was toxic waste. I, I think you look nice with no eyebrows. She does! I mean, I prefer her with eyebrows, but she can rock anything. No problem! <laughs> they went to such great lengths to restrain her! Also, who had the handcuffs? Where did that come from? Who was just carrying them around in their backpack? Like, that's the question we should have asked. Fun, and she likes sandwiches. Say hey to Pawnee. <laughs> Pawnee, this was so disrespectful and rude. She was messing with Tori from the get-go. I don't understand why, I guess Girlie was just a little psycho, like our friend Nora, but concerning. She was already ready to end Tori's sanity. Oh. It's just me, Pony. How did- the way is what Pony knew that that was Tori's mask. What happened to you at lunch? Sorry, it's just- I'm just really shy and I got nervous and- yeah, she pulled the shy card. I'm so shy and awkward. That's definitely what this is. Nothing sinister to see here. And I like the smell of the cleaning products. <laughs> That's a huge red flag. She's inhaled way too many cleaning products. That was her origin story. Ow! What's wrong? I have severe shoulder pain from too much shrugging. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Little Missy was acting her heart out here. Let's not touch her belly button. Yeah, but Let's not do that. She's gonna kill me! What? Beck's hair looks fabulous as always. Please, drop the hair care routine, sir. Don't be shy. It will be a public service at this point. <laughs> Let's watch Psychowitz do the bare minimum again for his student safety. <laughs> wow, man's actually intervened. Oh, I am shocked. He said, let me stand up as the adult in the room for the first time in my career. Where's Pawnee? Where's who? Pawnee! One of your students? Let's dwell into this a bit more as well. This was so dark because no one else had seen her. Pawnee knew what she was doing and she was making Tori really vulnerable by the end of this episode for an attack. And a doll. Being, oh my god, that is... I forgot that happened. That is disgusting. This is something out of a horror movie at this point. Please call the police immediately. It's true. No Pawnee. Okay, that does it. I feel sorry for Tori that no one believed her. Pawnee? 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 Tori had balls of steel for going out on her own to try and find Pawnee. I know she didn't think of her as a threat, but this was a bit too intense. <gasps> she defaced your locker! God. Pony was an evil mastermind that did creep me out when I was younger. Really, they missed the potential here. They could have had her as a recurring villain. Pony would have been able to be as iconic as Nora, in my opinion. Okay? Look, Tori, I got you some nice soothing herbal tea. Look at Andre yeah, always pulling through. Are some pretty magazines for you. I mean, these three boys gave me such unrealistic expectations for teenage boys at school. They're not like this. These three were so sweet. Kiss me one time for they take you home. Mm. 
<laughs> Robbie always tried. He always tried. And he wasn't smooth about it ever. Chinese Call the police. Sure, I think I have Please. One. The Chinese food delivery girl? Yes! If I saw my friend this freaked out, I'd be like, hey, let's just call the police at this point. Because this is concerning. Excuse me, what's your name? Linda. That? It's Linda. She can change her name, you dumb pooter, Beck. I'm gonna have a little chat with Linda. Girlie, you were endangered and you went out on your own with Pony, Balls of Steel once again. Uh, what? This was so rude. And deranged. I know there are Chinese noodles on my head, but I didn't put them there. Pony did. Let's use our three brain cells. Why would Tori put Chinese food on her head? She paid money for that. You're not gonna just dump it on yourself, no matter how far gone you are. <laughs> you know it's bad when the character's sliding down the door or a wall. We did a, need a description. You look upset. Isn't this one of the only times Tori and Trina's mum actually acts like a parental figure, aka the mum in this? Text Gary, I like that guy. I know, he's handsome, right? <laughs> Kinda. Mother Dearest was too into Gary in this show. I swear they were having an affair. No one else around. You could tell Tori was ready to redeem herself because Girlie looked amazing. She did her hair, she did her makeup. Not that she didn't look amazing without it, but, but she was ready to be in the press. She said, let this story go nationwide. How this would happen, I don't know. My name is Von Leibowitz. Von Leibowitz. I don't even know you. Why do I feel like that name was referenced before? Maybe it's just a past memory of this episode. Your locker? Used, used to be, to be my me. locker. <laughs> Imagine not moving on from high school. That's sad. <laughs> Pony and Nora both evil masterminds. I belong at this school. Not, not you. you. Me. me. I'm I gonna make, make it shine. shine. It's my turn to be. <laughs> Got you, bitch. Psych. I'll text your mom. Let her know you're okay. Definitely having Good. an affair. She's a special lady. That comment was not necessary. It just confirms they were having an affair. Change my mind. Oh. She's still pretty. Look at her looking like Mega Mind out here. Still adorable. She won't bother you again. Oh, thank we all knew this was not the end of it. Police are useless. Just tell your mom I send her my best. No, thank you, Gary. No, thank you. Gary's are extinct now as well. I, re I just remember knowing that this was going to be Pony in the front. It creeped me out so much as a child and it still kind of does. They really should have followed up with this. They could have done two parts for this episode. Because what happened next, we never know. It was such a missed opportunity. I cannot stress that enough. I was revving for part two of the crazy pony saga we only got one i wanted to know where she was driving them to that was so sinister and they just left us like that they were like aha no anyway that brings us to the end of the darkest episodes of victorious maybe let me know what your list would be if you were to do this yourself or would you agree with the darkest episodes that i chose anyway you're gonna be waiting for season four best and worst rated episode reactions for a lot longer haha <laughs> i'm just mean learned it from my girl jade but for now I'm tired of hearing the sound of my voice, I'm sure you're tired of hearing the sound of my voice, so I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks for watching, have a nice rest of your day, and adios!